Choco rainforests are renowned for their outstanding richness and exuberance of life, both biological and human. Yet these forests are at critical risk today due to rampant deforestation. I'm Dr. Jordan Karubian, a researcher at the University of California, Los Angeles. And in this short film, I will summarize the current situation in the Choco and document efforts to save these unique forests and the exceptional diversity they contain. The Choco rainforest is one of the richest biological areas on the planet. The Choco extends from the Pacific Ocean, up the western slope of the Andes Mountains, and runs on a north to south axis from southern Panama through Colombia and into northwestern Ecuador. These tropical forests are among the wettest habitats on Earth, and they house a truly stunning diversity of flora and fauna. Most of these species are very poorly known, and it is almost certain that scores of unknown animals and plants are awaiting discovery. Further, an unusually high proportion are endemic to the Choco, meaning that they are found nowhere else on Earth and that they are completely reliant upon these forests for their survival. For example, 60 of the over 500 species of bird recorded from the Choco are endemics, the highest number for any habitat type in the Americas. This exceptional diversity and endemism does not occur in a vacuum. The Choco is also home to tens of thousands of inhabitants with a rich cultural heritage, including people of African, indigenous, and mestizo descent. Life in the Choco is marked by extreme poverty. Many inhabitants live in isolated communities several hours or even days walk from the nearest road. They lack basic services, such as electricity, running water, education, or health care. People eke out a living by exploiting natural resources, including slash and burn agriculture, hunting, and timber extraction. Many of these families are compelled to cut down rainforest and to hunt in order to put food on the table. As a result, much of the Choco rainforest has already been deforested, and more is being lost each day. In Ecuador, for example, less than 10% of original Choco forest remains. The situation in the Choco today is critical. It combines extreme biological diversity and endemism with a local population currently lacking viable alternatives to deforestation. For these reasons, the Choco is an internationally recognized global conservation priority and is included as one of 17 hotspots for conservation around the world. Since 2001, my colleagues and I at the Center for Tropical Research have been working with local residents to save the Choco rainforest. Center for Tropical Research is housed at the Institute of the Environment at UCLA, and our multifaceted program combines top-level scientific research with local training, education, and development projects to achieve meaningful conservation results. Our program is based in the Machichindul Reserve in Esmeraldas Province, northwestern Ecuador, and especially in the Bilsa Biological Station and 15 surrounding communities representing 2,500 inhabitants. The foundation of our work in the Choco is top-level scientific research with conservation implications. We are conducting groundbreaking studies on endangered species like the long wattled umbrella bird. We study long wattled umbrella birds by trapping them in the canopy of the rainforest with mist nets, taking morphological measures, and applying a lightweight, temporary radio transmitter before releasing them unharmed. We use the radios to follow the birds through the forest, documenting habitat requirements, basic ecology, and other necessary conservation information. We are carrying out similar studies on other rare and endangered species, like the banded ground cuckoo and the brown wood rail, both of which were virtually unknown prior to our research. We complement these studies of individual species with research on broader ecological and evolutionary processes. For example, we are testing how deforestation and global warming affect the diversity of birds, frogs, and insects, 
and how best to conserve these species in the face of these threats. We are also researching how best to ensure that ecologically vital processes, like forest regeneration, continue unchanged into the future. We disseminate the results of our research in peer-reviewed scientific journals, presentations at international scientific meetings, and, on a more local level, via formal and informal presentations to non-governmental organizations, governmental agencies, and local communities. Our goal in the CHOCO is to continue conducting scientific research of the highest caliber with direct implications for conservation. We are fully aware that scientific research alone is not enough to achieve lasting conservation results. For this reason, we have initiated a multifaceted training, education, and development program in the CHOCO. At the local level, we employ residents of local communities as full-time biological researchers and environmental ambassadors. Jorge Olivo, for example, investigates the long-waddled umbrella bird. Cuando llegué a este a este adentro de este proyecto, mi vida cambió totalmente. Empecé a darle más valorización a lo que es la naturaleza, a lo que es en sí mismo, todo lo que nos rodea. Domingo Cabrera is in charge of botanical surveys, and Fernando Castillo works on seed dispersal. Como joven, para trabajar en este proyecto con Jordan es una gran satisfacción porque muchos no lo hacen, prefieren otras cosas. Y me gusta conservar. These local residents have received direct training in a range of methods, including computer literacy, radio telemetry, and identification of flora and fauna. This research experience has increased their understanding of, and appreciation for, Choco rainforest, while providing a direct economic incentive for the conservation of these forests. Yo veo que aquí hay un, un mejor trato a las personas, eh, hay otro cambio de, o sea, otro trabajo, es mejor el trabajo aquí. Y yo pienso que de esta forma uno puede estar mejor para el futuro, podemos decir así. We are also working with Ecuadorian universities to build in-country conservation and research capacity. We provide direct training to university students in the form of grants for honors thesis projects. In addition to paying for the research itself and a stipend, we provide close assistance with project design, implementation, analysis, and dissemination of results, including presentations at international scientific meetings and publications in peer-reviewed scientific journals. Luis Carrasco, one of these students, has gone on to become the local director of scientific research of our project. Algo muy interesante que tenemos también son registros de aves que que casi no estaban ya muy conocidos, digamos que sabemos que están en peligro de extinción, están en peligro bastante agudo para desaparecer. Entonces eh, tenemos la sorpresa de haber encontrado el gran cuco, ¿no es cierto? Entonces Es todo ese tipo de, de, de registros, de saber que esas aves están aquí, que estamos rodeados de una naturaleza increíble, es lo que nos sigue llenando de ánimo realmente para seguir trabajando. We also work with international students and have directly contributed to 20 successful undergraduate or master's theses from a range of universities throughout North America and Europe. Porque, como ustedes saben, algunos saben... Eh, it is the local residents in the Chocó who will ultimately decide the fate of the forests around them. We believe that increased knowledge and appreciation of these forests in combination with economically viable alternatives to deforestation will allow informed and wise choices for the future. We are implementing a series of complementary programs designed to achieve this goal. Residents we employ as biologists also serve as environmental ambassadors. Yes, por eso nuestro deseo de que los profesores sean los portavoz, ya no en los adultos, porque a veces los adultos somos duros, somos bien difíciles, pero sí se puede con la niñez. These men and women are well respected and have served as elected leaders of their respective communities. They make regular PowerPoint presentations to their own and other communities, often carrying generator, computer, and video projector long distances along muddy trails. Many of the communities lack electricity, 
and the response to these presentations has been well worth the effort we put into making them. Our environmental ambassadors are also much more effective at conveying a message of conservation than people from outside the communities could ever hope to be. In recognition of this success, Jorge Olivo was awarded the Disney Wildlife Conservation Fund's Local Conservation Hero Award for the year 2006. In all of South America, this prestigious prize is awarded to a single person each year, and Jorge's success has done much to raise the profile of conservation in the eyes of local residents. Para mí es un reconocimiento pues muy grande de que hoy día se me ha hecho aquí la entrega de estos premios. Este premio cierto que es en referencia a mi persona, pero de hecho lo compartiré con todos ustedes que participar en lo que es la enseñanza, porque si bien es cierto, hay un refrán muy antiguo que dice, el que sabe, no sabía. To complement the work of the environmental ambassadors, we are also implementing an education project in local schools. This project is beginning its third year and has reached over 300 children in each year. Each month, teachers from 15 local community schools attend a weekend-long workshop led by Monica Gonzalez. In each workshop, these teachers are prepared to teach an environmental theme and are provided with teaching strategies, aids, games, and a syllabus. We make follow-up visits to each school and also make regular presentations to adults in the evenings. We also invite student groups to Bilsa Biological Station and make frequent visits to communities to provide local children and adults with a first-hand experience of our research and of local flora and fauna. We are also playing a key role in the development of grassroots-level community projects based on economically and ecologically viable alternatives to habitat destruction. We have established an environmental network in which elected leaders from local communities identify conservation and development priorities and formulate plans of action, which we then help to implement. We are currently implementing a project on the production and sale of organic cocoa, and the network has identified reforestation of watersheds, ecotourism, and handicraft production as future priorities. These projects are a critical step towards lasting conservation in the area precisely because they are developed and implemented by local community members rather than being imposed from above. The situation in the Ecuadorian Chocó today is urgent. Deforestation continues at an unacceptably high rate, and because these forests are so exceptionally rich in diversity, change in the habitat here has a disproportionately large impact on species extinction. The fate of a tremendous wealth of species now hangs in the balance, and we are literally in a race against time. But there is good reason to believe that this is a race we can win. Working hand in hand with local residents, we are implementing community-based management plans that combine scientific and social means to preserve the natural habitat and conserve biodiversity. This innovative approach has already made significant positive impacts, but there remains much more work to do. There is a tremendous need and local desire to continue our successful conservation programs which are made possible by the involvement and assistance of people such as yourself. Your help is now crucial to ensure the future of Choco rainforests, their flora and fauna, and their human inhabitants. Thank you.